so much, Lisa. We appreciate your music talents, as well as Scott Dunn and David Bouvet, who've been joining us in our music ministry. You know, several years ago, I thought it would be just a fun and brilliant idea to play darts. So I bought myself a dartboard. And positioning that beautiful dartboard in my basement on the wall, I began to throw those darts one by one, one by one. You know, trying to hit the target. Well, you know, after a while, I began to realize that my basement wall was now being marked up, messed up, and just all tattered with all kinds of holes and dots because so often I had missed the mark. I'd missed the target. That wall was, uh, that wall was a mess of ugly scars and all kinds of damages. And after a few weeks, okay, a few months, okay, 12 months, all right, it's a year, I finally began to learn how to hit the target. It took me a while. Yes, it did. I began to practice, 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 practice. You know, it took me a while, but oh boy, the wonderful feeling that came to my life when I hit the target. When I actually got the bullseye, it was like, yes, right on. Oh, now that felt amazing. Felt really good. You know, we're called to live a life of being right on target. Spiritually, that's right. Our spiritual life is called to being a day-to-day -day journey of being right on target, hitting the bullseye at all times. And when we do, oh, it feels such great success. It feels so good. It feels wonderful to be right on target at all times. This is our life's journey. This is a journey about learning how to hit the mark like a dark player. Learning how to hit the mark, hit that bullseye, requires practice, practice, practice. Would you join with me now, just centering our hearts as we think about this for a moment, that this is our journey, being right on, and that's our target. Would you pray with me? This we know to be our truth, that the loving divine presence is here with us, in this very room, deep within our hearts and our lives. Deep within us, there is a great knowing, a consciousness and awareness of this divine presence that will never leave us nor forsake us. And so we welcome a fresh awareness of this in this moment. And we center ourselves in this thought that God is at work. God is ever speaking. God is unfolding insight and wisdom for my life. And as we do, we have the authority to claim the highest and best that in this moment, all things are coming forward to us in the journey of enlightenment. We are experiencing a wonderful moment of spiritual enrichment. We are experiencing this moment of ahas and the lights going on in our individual journey, that we are the people who are right on target. We claim this now with great gratitude, knowing that this is exactly what's unfolding for our lives. With that great assurance, we release this now as our truth, as together we say, and so it is. Well. Do you ever wonder why there are times in life when you feel like you're missing the mark? There are moments in life when you feel like, wait a minute, I'm just overwhelmed with a sense of failure that I've been trying and trying and trying to hit that target and I've missed it. You know, sometimes we are filled with all kinds of guilt and shame and self-hatred over the fact that we're not at our highest and best. And we may have heard that ancient scripture saying, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There are many religious traditions that are echoing the ideas that sometimes we've fallen short of the highest and best in our lives. And we may reference it as being, oh, I have sinned, I have sinned. Well, let's take a look at that. When we find that really sin means that I've simply missed the mark. I've been aiming, I've been targeting, I've been trying to reach that bullseye, shall we say, but I've missed the mark. I'm not hitting the target. And why do we keep missing that mark? Well, the answer is so simple. It's because of our error in thinking. We miss the mark because as a, you might say as a dark player, I was missing the target because my judgment was off. 
My thinking was off. I was trying to hit the aim and I wasn't quite understanding what I needed to do to correct that aim to hit that bullseye. And sometimes in life, we don't always understand what we need to do to correct ourselves. And so we are entertaining this error thinking, living in ignorance, not quite understanding exactly what it is that we need to do to hit our highest and best. And so we are struggling with that. And what happens is that error thinking is saying, my skill isn't clear as a dark player, or saying that in my spiritual life, my skill of living this life to the fullest isn't quite clear. I'm lacking some knowledge. I'm lacking a consciousness or an awareness that would bring about great success in my life. So what brings about a clear thinking? Well, truth, that's right. Truth, it's the principle or the foundations. And quite often what we're missing in life is that we haven't echoed enough, we haven't resounded these wonderful words of truth through our culture, our society, our families, our homes, or sharing with individuals. We need to learn the principles, learn the foundations. I need to learn the principles and foundations of throwing a dart. I'm so grateful for those who came by to say, you know what, if you look a little higher, if you aim a little higher, if you figure in the fact that the weight of the dart may slowly go downward, uh, you might compensate for all of those things. And as the knowledge came forward, I became one who could hit the target. And we learn these principles and foundations. And what happens is we begin to learn how to hone the skill of successful living. Wow, that's right. We have the opportunity to live successfully, but we've got to learn. We've got to accept these foundations. We've got to understand the principles of truth for our life that set us free from error thinking. Ancient truth says truth will set you free. How powerful that is. Understanding truth will liberate us Understanding the principles will liberate us. Understanding exactly how to do it will make me one who hits the target right on. So it is for our spiritual life. And we spent time simply understanding universal truths. Universal truths. Truths that have been down through the ages, echoed over and over again through so many religious pathways. Truth that has been echoed so many times through our own traditional faith. And we may say, wait a minute, let's look at that. Let's examine it. Let's understand it to the fullest. Because we see that error thinking, the ignorance that we live in, the absence of embracing these truths keeps us from hitting the target. The beautiful passage from the Hebrew scriptures, Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed by lack of knowledge. And really, that's truly our story. We miss the mark. We fall into the places where we're not as successful. We don't achieve our highest and best simply because we haven't entertained enough knowledge, understanding. We haven't awakened a consciousness within us, an awareness. How important it is that we do this by really taking the time out to study, to embrace the journey of gaining wisdom. Jesus said, I am the way. He's our great way shower, a master teacher for us for our lives, saying, I am the way, it is the I am that he speaks of, not he himself personally, but the I am within him being the way. And that I am is this God within us. It is the way to hit the target. Sometimes we get ignorant of the way and we miss the mark. So we're looking at understanding the I am within us understanding this wonderful consciousness within us. To be right on target in life is our work is to gain then this higher understanding of what? God, that's right. The divinity within us, this wonderful power, the I am that resonates within you and me, the wonderful presence of God that's found deep within us. For we find this beautiful text unfolding for us such wisdom God is not a man. So if we're going to understand God, let's just break down some simple crazy ideas that have been propagated throughout our culture and our religious traditions of so many that God is some sort of man. Well, first of all, it states God is not a man that he should lie. Let's set aside any kind of gender association with the divine and acknowledge that God is not human, even though we have tried to make God ever so human. 
We've tried to shape God in our likeness versus us shaping our lives in God's likeness. Let's establish this very truth. God is not a man. God is not this being. And when we offer these kind of thoughts of thinking, oh, wait a minute, let's talk to the big man in the sky. Let's talk to the man uh, out there. Let's talk to the God presence, the, the father that we might look in as human context. What we do is we miss out the very understanding of who and what God is. And in that ignorance, we continue to miss the mark. So we understand God is not a man that he should lie. God does not lie. There's no error thinking in God. God is this infinite wisdom, timeless wisdom, ageless wisdom. It's there for us all through from the very beginning all the way through to the end, the Alpha and the Omega. God is this essence and there is no error thinking within the divine. We as humanity, we've lied. How many of you can relate to some of the lies you've told? We'll say growing up, not necessarily in your mature years, right? We'll cut you some slack. But we may all think about some time in the journey of our life where we've lied. We've seen and experienced people lying to us, even people lying about lying. Man lies, why? Out of fear. We lie in our insecurity. We lie to manipulate. We lie to deceive. We lie out of ego and self-focus. And God is not any of these. God is not caught up in the essence of humanity and its ego, its desire to manipulate its own insecurity. Because of the absence of truth in people's lives, we fall into these patterns then of error thinking. God is not a man and not involved in error thinking. Humanity may, and we may be engaged in thinking that is falling short of the highest best simply because of our lack of understanding of truth. God, the divine presence, is not any of these things, for God is truth. And God is not one who then misses the mark. That which is God is that which is right on target at all times. So if we're welcoming this into our lives, we're understanding this spirit, this presence, this divine essence, this consciousness, awareness, that is always right on at all times. And to dwell then in God is to dwell simply in all that God is, and that's love, to dwell in this place. And the answer to all of life's questions might be asking simply ourselves, what would love do? What would love do? You know, we have so many questions that we're searching through today's world and saying, do we do this, do we that? Is this right, is this appropriate? How do we live out our highest and best? And we might simply sum it up with the one question, what would love do? For God is love. And if love would do it, ah, we should do it. If love would do it, we should do it. And let me tell you, you're guaranteed to be right on. You're guaranteed to hit the bullseye. For God is this consciousness that is filled with love. Let me reiterate that too often, maybe in some of your traditions of growing up, religious backgrounds or traditions of different uh, spiritual journeys where they may have taught this concept of God being this being up in heaven, somewhere out in the universe, a being again likened unto a man, this white man sitting on the throne with a gray beard and white hair, who certainly only speaks English because we think that's the godly language. Uh, you know, how crazy we have uh, shaped and formed these myths and traditions in our thinking. But when we do this, we're actually in violation of the very ancient truths and scriptures and guidelines offered in the Ten Commandments. Where the Ten Commandments said, thou shalt not create any graven image. Do not image God in any way. So. When we're thinking, I'm praying to the God in the sky, I'm praying to the white man with the gray beard, when I'm praying to the one who is out there, we're actually working against all the spiritual truth and insight that's been afforded to us through biblical wisdom. So we find that we should not have any graven image. So then what is God if we're not shaping and forming and picturing what God is? God is consciousness. God is this awareness. God is this divine presence that we come in contact with when we begin to awaken to this sense of knowing and feeling deep within this immense love, 
this love that loves us so much, care for us, that created us in our highest and best and wants to see us continue to prosper in that same way. God is not this man, but this presence that is experienced in an awareness, in an understanding on a day-to-day -day basis. God is this universal mind, this place of infinite wisdom, of knowing, of knowing. When we come to encounter with God, there's this unfolding of all kinds of insights for us. I love that passage, be still and know that I am God. It sums up everything that we're called to do. Simply quiet the life, the heart, the mind. Quiet the very essence of your own life and all of its energies that are to be so distracted. And simply begin to know. And how do we know best? By we begin to feel. And through that feeling, we begin to understand. And through that, we become more enlightened in the knowing of this is what God is. God is this infinite intelligence that is seen in everything and everyone. Not a being, not a physical thing, but a, something to be experienced, an intelligence, a consciousness, an awareness for our life. What we need to understand is that quite often we find our world teaching all kinds of politics and taking <laughs> postures on all kinds of political and social action issues in our world. And quite often you find that there are people who are telling you what to think and not encouraging you how to think. Let me tell you this. Don't let someone, some church, some group, some society, some temple, some synagogue, whatever it may be, try to tell you what to think, but certainly invite you on the journey of your own thinking. For your ability to think is your pathway to God and don't let anyone steal that from you. Because they're saying, wait a minute, I, I, I'm going to decide for you. I will tell you what to think. Oh, how beautiful it is when we awaken to the power of our own individual journey. And we allow ourselves to think freely and to experience. And sometimes people get afraid of that, to allow too many free thinkers in the world. Because we think, oh, where are they, they going to go? Let me tell you this, everyone's on a journey. And as we allow this process of awakening and of thinking, of contemplation, we rise in a greater understanding and a knowing. Scripture says, as a man thinks, so he is. So don't let someone take away what you are by saying, I've thought for you. I've decided for you. I've made the decision for you. I think that you should do this. You should do that. This is what you should believe or what you need to search it out for yourself. Because the journey of your own searching and your own seeking will only empower you to be the best that you can be. So I invite you to uh, travel the journey of seeking truth for yourself. For truth guides us and helps us in this thinking process. It sets us free from the cycles of thinking in error over and over again, repeating ourselves and say, wait a minute, let me stop and think. What would love do? What would love do? And in every circumstance, in every situation, we need not have someone else tell us. We need to pause and find the answer for ourselves and say, wait a minute, let me think. Let me think. Where there's a divine presence within me that is love. And what would love do in every one of these circumstances, every one of these scenarios? And there it is, we find the unfolding of truth within our individual journey. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 says, Rather than speaking the truth in love, we are growing up in every way unto him who is the head into Christ. Rather speaking, I should say, rather speaking the truth in love that in anything that we do, let us always speak truth in love. Not truth in trying to set someone straight or to say this is what I think you should think. And quite often we find a world right now that's trying to set everybody straight and say, you need to think my way and my way is right and my way is the only way. And we've got a lot of one way thinking in our world where people have got sort of blinders on to anything else in the world, that there's any other perspective or any other view that uh, particularly when it comes to encountering God, a lot of people say, my way is the only coming way to come into God. My way is the only pathway. Yet I've had the chance and opportunity to travel all around the world and I found so many different cultures, whether it be living in Africa, Asia, India, 
the Pacific with islands, whether it be living in Australia or living in Latin America, all around the world, everywhere I've been, and having the opportunity to do ministry, to hear people speak of many different pathways of coming to God and finding what they're talking about is this incredible consciousness, an awakening, an awareness to the power of love within their hearts and their lives. Each one describing it from their own different perspectives. So speak this truth. Speak truth in love at all times, not in judgment. For this truth is what will guide us on how to think, not what to think. I love this passage from the ancient truths of the Hebrew scriptures. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge God and God will direct your paths. Don't lean on our own limited understanding that's error thinking, that's constantly struggling, trying to find solutions from a perspective of limitation. Ah, but simply trust in the divine, that consciousness within, that awareness within that says, God knows, and the God within me knows, and the wisdom within me will unfold, and the insight that I need will be rising forward, and the answers that I seek are there for me, and I know that they're coming forward. I claim them now, and I welcome them in my journey. This is the truth that the divine spirit and presence of wisdom will guide your paths, guide you in every decision you're needed to make, showing you the right way and how to be right on and how to hit that target at all times. John chapter 16, verse 13 says, when the spirit of truth comes, it will guide you. It will guide you. So we seek this wisdom that will guide our lives in each and every day. And there are trouble is, we've got a lot of people say, well, I'm seeking wisdom of God. I'm seeking all kinds of understanding. God, show me what I need to do about X, Y, and Z. The challenge is because they have a limited understanding of who and what God is, and it's so colored over and shaped over by traditions and myths. And quite often people will say, well, I think God punishes. So then the will of God must be for me to punish. And so we act out in ways retaliation. Because of our limited thinking, we may think, well, God withholds. So the will of God must be, I need to withhold. And I'll withhold from you or you or you, even though you may ask or be in need, because, but I believe that God withholds. So I have the right to withhold. Some think people believe and seek for guidance in the thinking that says God shows partiality, some sort of favoritism. But we find the ancient truth always in contrast with that. Yet we think, well, God shows favoritism, so I should show favoritism. I can say some group is better than others or some group is more special or to be favored above the others. You see, there are those then who would say if God is fickle and can be manipulated through prayer and beseeching and begging by saying, please God, please God, please God. And you see those evangelists who are preaching out and those who are screaming and hollering at God, begging and pleading and, and claiming and naming and all this kind of stuff in, in ways of trying to manipulate and get God to do what they want God to do. Well, if God can be manipulated, well, there must be God's will that I manipulate you. You see how people a react when they don't understand who and what God is and where we've gotten in our spiritual journeys in our world today. John chapter four, verse 24 says, God is spirit and those who worship him, meaning those who commune with him, those who connect, those who are sensing oneness must connect, shall we say, in spirit and in truth. This is how we connect, in the real truth. Let me tell you, if you're struggling still, I'm not sure what truth is. I'm not sure how it unfolds. Be still. It will come to you. It will come to you. For the Spirit is ever teaching and ever speaking. Our challenge is we allow so many other things to be speaking for us. And we're listening to the mind chatter of the world around us rather than in stillness allowing that very spirit of wisdom and insight to do the teaching within us. To unfold for us. For when we understand the truth, the truth that what God is, then we have the tools to help us make the right decisions in life and form strong and healthy beliefs and decide for ourselves what's the highest and best. 
But we have listened to so much fear-based uh, teachings from people who are the fear-based leading the fearful. And so often we've listened to the blind who are simply leading the blind. And we have thought things through through the mind of man and its limitations rather than the mind of God and its infinite possibilities. Be still. Allow the mind of God, a consciousness within, awareness within, to speak to you and unfold truth for your life. The psalmist writes in chapter 86, verse 11, teach me your way. And that way is a way of consciousness, a way of enlightenment, a way of understanding, knowledge. Teach me your way that I may walk, that I may ever exist in your truth. And this is the key for the journey of our life. Because when we understand this, we understand that this truth is there to guide us, lead us, shape us, mold us, for us to hit the target and always be right on. When it comes to how to think, well, we begin with some simple lessons and understanding of what has been resounding in truth down through the ages. Truth set us free from missing the target. Truth, let me tell you this, that in God there's no partiality. God so loved the world. It's a beautiful passage. From the Old Testament to the New, from writings of the Hindus to writings of the Islamic traditions to writings of all types of spiritual backgrounds, we could go on and on, is the echoing of this, that in God there is no favoritism, there's no partiality. And so then that shapes our thinking. For 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 8 says, Beloved, let us love one another, because love comes from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. And whoever does not, does not know God. Whoever does not know love, does not know God. Because God is love. And that love shows no partiality, no favoritism. It is a sense of love that is demonstrating an equality for all. And when we embrace that truth, wow, we can apply it to so many things happening in our world. God so loves everyone, every being equally, and we're called to do the same. Beautiful truth speaks that God is generous to all. The generosity of God is taught through so many spiritual traditions. It's echoed over and over again that God is the giver of good gifts and the generosity of this wonderful creator, divine source that we may refer symbolically as father is not in gender context, but understanding father being source. So we look at this as God, the source of all, ever so generous, never withholding. Yet so often we're afraid to be generous, afraid to be generous to others, afraid to be generous up to other worlds and other cultures, other communities, or other people, other individuals, because we are afraid there's just not enough. There's only enough for me. So in that context, we want to hoard and say, there's no way that we can live and demonstrate generosity each and every day because we simply believe there's not enough. And we live from that false or error thinking. The beautiful unfolding truth is that the generosity of God is ever present and desiring to unfold through each and every one of us. So we wonder what to do or how to treat the world around us. Can we be generous to others? As we look at the very truth that generosity is available to all, to each and every one of us, and the call then is for us to share, to demonstrate that same generosity in all aspects of our life. Beautiful truth is that God is not fear. What That is to say that the God of our awareness of consciousness is not one that is fearful, but without any aspects of fear whatsoever. Oh, but someone may say, wait a minute. What about the beautiful passage from Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10? This is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Shouldn't there be some fear? Ah, that word is defined really as respect, to understand and to revere for the understanding and reverence of all that is a God, the consciousness that awakens us is the beginning of knowledge and the unfolding of understanding for our lives. We need not fear anything. That's right, we need not fear anything. But we need to live in respect and responsibility. Now that's key and crucial. 
We might even look at applying this truth to our lives here and now in the midst of this pandemic. We need not fear the pandemic, ah, but we need to walk in respect and responsibility through everything. You need not fear anything. You don't need to fear fire. You respect and be responsible. You don't need to fear water and wondering, oh, well, with this water, I will I drown? But with respect and responsibility. We not to fear not gravity, but with respect and responsibility, we act and interact with God, who is fearless, inviting you the same to be fearless, but to walk each and every day, making decisions grounded, founded in respect and responsibility. Now, God is prosperous and desiring your prosperity and your success. This is a very, uh, a concept that a lot of people struggle with. God wants me to be successful. How can you be a blessing? How can you be a blessing if you're not successful? How can you be a blessing if God says, Oh, I intend for you to struggle and to be in poverty. I intend for you to have all kinds of challenges financially. I intend for you to just be uh, so diminished as a light in the world because of the lack of success within your journey. How can we be the light that we're called to be? You see, the very essence of truth would unfold for us that the desire of this that we call God, of this wonderful consciousness of the divine within us, is that our calling is to live a life of prosperity. And prosperity is not just for us as individuals, but prosperity to be shared for each and every one. To be prosperous in love and grace and forgiveness. To be prosperous in all aspects of life, in emotion and feeling. To be prosperous in all things and to share all things. Be that generous in spirit. But we know that in prosperity, again, there is enough. So let me offer this to you today. I invite you to dwell on God. A consciousness. Not a person. Not a man. Not a being. Not an object. But a presence within. Dwell within. And if you're saying, wait a minute, how do I do this? Begin by centering your thoughts that God is love. Feel that love. Welcome that love. Allow love to rise up within you and allow that love then to nurture you, strengthen you, and speak to you and unfold for you all that you may need to know as you ask, what would love do? And find the answers unfolding for your life. For is there that the truth, that is God, the very principle will set you free from the bondage of this error, thinking of thinking uh, in mistakes and mishaps and poor judgments, thinking in ways that are not bringing about your highest and best, thinking and struggling from lack and separation of all that is good in our lives. This consciousness at work in us. It's at work in us now. It's working through us. It's around us. And it's always for us an awakening and awareness. The kingdom of heaven is within. The divine presence is within. The light of God is within. The understanding of truth is found within. Go within. Because let me tell you, boy, does it feel good when you hit the mark. Boy, does it hit feel good, feel good when you're right on target. Boy, does it feel good that everything's in sync and running so beautifully within our world when we are walking, living in the power of truth, liberated and set free. Today, I'm inviting you to live a life that's right on.